astrologically turning 30 is a big effing deal. It's called Saturn. Saturn takes 30 years to orbit the sun and your personal birth chart. When it returns to square one, Saturn tests your ability to learn from mistakes. Are you ready for the next phase? Have you matured into adulthood? Have you honestly asked, who am I? Yes, opens doors with ease. No says, condemned to repeat. Staying tuned to Boss Lady News. I go. I hope you guys are really enjoying the show. Feel free to email me, Boss Lady. Concept of magnificence. There's a lot of talk these days about greatness, but greatness alone, without definition of standards that define it, um, is very um, vague concept because someone can be great in um, spelling, someone can be great in building cars, and somebody can be great in doing nothing. So we have to understand the concept behind uh, words we use as desirable goals. There's a lot of talk these days about um, America to make it great again. Um, there's a lot of talk about other uh, situations and we don't really know how to deal with those um, great desires if we do not have any shared understanding about what is content of greatness. So I've been developing certain aspects of content of greatness from our heritage. Uh, let's look at um, uh, the concept of magnificence in the um, encyclopedia of internet, Wikipedia. Here it is. Magnificence, uh, as you right here see, it is um, 
such a complicated concept that it has history as an idea. It, in fact, it is uh, a concept that has great history in itself. So here we use the word great already as um, an application to uh, durability of a concept that has earned praise throughout uh, centuries and in this case thousands of years. And here you have the definition the word magnificence comes from the Latin magnum facere which means to do something great. So right here at the beginning of the definition we have connection of the word magnificence to action of greatness. And that is a concept that has endured that in order to be magnificent that action, that person, that um, event, place has to be connected to the word, to greatness. Then we have the continuation of the definition. The Latin word draws on the Greek megaloprepeia. And this noun conveys the meaning of doing something great, which is fitting or seemly to the circumstance. So right here you have a situation in which you understand that that concept of magnificence would be applied to different situations and different circumstances and has to be aligned with um, what is appropriate to a particular circumstance. For example, um, in the times of Louis XIV, the concept of magnificence was applied to the greatness of architecture to the greatest of fashions, uh, interactions in the social realm, power and divine authority. Many people couldn't claim divine authority in those times of King Louis XIV and he was considered magnificent because he displayed it. He had that um, gift from the Holy Spirit that allowed people to connect to the uh, ways in which God moved the actions and words of his king Louis XIV. So this application of the concept of magnificent action was applied to the right circumstances of that time. Now, if someone wanted to apply the concept magnificent to a French revolutionary who just killed King Louis XVI and um, Queen Marie Antoinette, we would know that this was not an appropriate way to use that word magnificence to what um, is considered regicide, a form of murder. And therefore, French Revolution pretty much abandoned that concept because they knew that the actions were not really magnificent. Uh, today we would say that um, the way they uh, became rulers of France was a great crime because of the massive murderers, massive uh, 
uh, displacement of people. We have different sensibility now to think about actions that destroy magnificence and then replace it with um, pretty much nothing. So the, the word magnificence has to be applied to the right circumstances. I think that today we are in a situation in which the sensibility of mankind is against um, mass murders, is against achieving purposes of power and authority through destruction of opponents' lives. We have uh, different ways today of um, selecting people to diverse offices and generally we like to use political measures to achieve those purposes. So the sensibility today changed to the point in which there is desire to come back to the concept of magnificence in the context of political authority and power. And the, um, the need for us today is to learn more about how those before us understood this concept. Um, co to continue the definition from Wikipedia, magnificence is a philosophical, aesthetic, and social economic notion deeply rooted in Western culture since classical antiquity. So in this particular um, understanding, there is connection to the long history of the concept of magnificence reaching classical antiquity of um, what we can trace archaeologically and historically. But in fact, if you look at the history of the entire world, you see that concept of magnificence alive in the cultures of um, non-European heritage. This history of magnificence in Japan, history of magnificence in China, history of magnificence in India, incredibly rich history of magnificence in Arabia, in Israel. Israel, of course, is today considered part of Western civilization in a very um, uh, profound way because uh, European countries uh, became converted to worship Jewish God, God of Israel, Abraham and Jacob. So Europe, after classical antiquity, focused on magnificence in the understanding of Israel. And Israel got it directly from God. So Europe expanded um, that understanding of magnificence to connect to the ancient culture of Israel. And of course, everybody knows history of King Solomon and the amazing things that uh, were created by him. Um, Russia connected to uh, Israel through Kiev and Rus and um, developed expansion of the concept of um, magnificence in uh, ways that are still alive and that was connected to the um, size of the empire, size of um, reach to focus on education and great architecture, um, a beauty in um, 
the ways the person uh, dresses, beauty in song and dance, uh, music. So we understand that that concept of magnificence in Russia and Ukraine, Poland, all those countries connected to the way Christianity developed um, since um, Christianization of Kiev and Rus, we see powerful desire of people in those areas to search for and develop magnificence as something valuable, something that enhances our perceptions and helps us live um, our lives in beautiful ways. Even after communism, which destroyed some of the most amazing things in uh, Russian Empire, hundreds of thousands of beautiful churches were destroyed, millions of people were murdered, but the power of that image of magnificence could not be destroyed. And Joseph Stalin simply developed it, continued it. He couldn't um, um, destroy it because it would have been the same as destroying Russia. So that continued even through the uh, days in which Russia was forced to abandon the clarity of her Christian ways and lives. And today, of course, everything is back to the right um, direction and Russia has been developing magnificence again. Um, some of you may not understand the reason for it. Uh, some of you think that it's because Russia wants to have influence on other countries. But in fact, this is something that has been going on in Russia since Russia received Christianity from um, Roman Empire from, and from Israel and then applied it to her ways that at that time were not very magnificent. So magnificence in Russia is actually outcome of Western influence on Russia. And this is very powerful. You can see that, um, that understanding of the value of magnificence increases beauty around us, increases sense of goodness and sense of nobility and teaches people how to magnificently relate to each other. So by definition, magnificence would not be vulgar, would promote beautiful speech, beautiful relationships, uh, wisdom in relationships. And uh, to finish this particular definition in Wikipedia, um, magnificence regards the greatness of actions, courage, excellence, honor, generosity, and splendor of lifestyles of noble purposes. So right here, we have direction also for social media. There's this total waste of time and effort on banning people and um, criticizing people, doing some negative things. Instead, that energy and time and place should be focused on developing modern ways of applications of magnificence to social media and that would be to promote greatness of actions. So instead of um, focusing on condemning someone for promoting bad actions, it would be better to create patterns and ways that would teach people uh, alternatives to bad actions, good actions. 
Um, the same about courage. If you don't have a difficult situation to overcome, courage will, no sh will not show up. Courage shows up in situations in which we have to do something that may be um, risky, that may not um, allow for good outcome. And yet we would use courage to achieve it. Of course, contrast to courage would be um, cowardness. Then search for excellence in the context of magnificence. Search for honor. How do you know what is honorable or what is not honorable if you don't have the standards of magnificence? You may call honorable action, which is actually wrong action, base action. Then there are also applications of magnificence to generosity. Uh, there are people who um, use their resources on things that are um, not defined by, by magnificence and waste a lot of money and time. And when generosity is informed by magnificence, then the direction in which those resources is going is going to end up in creating more magnificence and creating things that are valuable and desirable. And of course, the splendor. And splendor doesn't only have to apply to um, a building or a city, but also to our individual splendor, to the ways in which we relate to each other and, and develop lifestyles with noble purposes. So, for example, if there is an organization that is created to promote education, that organization as a noble organization will open up to history of all education. In contrast to an organization of uh, ignoble purpose, they would uh, create a way in which magnificence of other heritage will be repressed and they would just promote whatever they think is um, uh, worthy of education. So that would not be a noble purpose. That would be um, a purpose that limits nobility. So I think that in all the history of magnificence, we have so much material. Um, I'll show you uh, a little bit more the content of what you um, can read um, and this is just guidance from um, Wikipedia because then you can reach YouTube, um, um, Facebook, Twitter, other social media, books, libraries and you can develop incredibly rich knowledge about history of um, of magnificence. Look here, magnificence in classical antiquity, Plato, Herodotus and Xenophon, Aristotle, Cicero, and then Roman history, a magnificence in ancient Rome, rhetoric, Demetrius and art criticism, Vitruvius and the magnificence of Roman architecture, magnificence in the Middle Ages, Thomas Aquinas, Dante Algi, Ieri, magnificence in Renaissance Italy, magnificence as a civic virtue, magnificence and patronage in Renaissance Italy, magnificence in the 18th century, Giovanni Battista Piranesi, etc., etc. You see the amazing, uh, amazing um, history of uh, magnificence, and this only is is from history of uh, uh, European heritage, but I encourage you to look at magnificence in other civilizations at, as well. And you'd be surprised at 
how powerful it is, how it um, uh, creates a sense of honor in people who are born in those lands. And I think that when we would look at history of magnificence in the whole world, we will uh, create perceptions of equality. Because if you think that only one group of people has valid magnificence and everybody else was just poor and victimized and slave, then it, you create a form of contempt because it is not true. So I'm also encouraging you to transform the way you look at history of all civilizations to try to find goodness and perfection in all of them and then look at their story from that perspective because then you'll find honor in those civilizations and when you find honor in yourself and in others that is relationship of equality because it comes from the right connection to magnificence because if you live ignoble lives yourselves and then all you see is ignoble lives in other people you create hateful connection you hate yourself for being no ignoble and you hate them for being like um an inferior uh, uh way